So the way that I recommend you use Ansible on Windows 10 is that you use the Windows subsystem for Linux. This will give you a bash prompt that you can use to not only generate SSH keys the same way you would on Linux, because it actually is Linux, it's also the same way as you would generate SSH keys on Mac OS as well, and it makes it much, much easier to install and use Ansible in the long run. So this is the way that I recommend you, ins you install Ansible on Windows 10. I'm gonna go ahead now and enable the Windows subsystem for Linux so that you can see how it's done. And in the next video, we'll use the subsystem in order to create an SSH key. And then again, in order to install Ansible and in the future, in order to run Ansible. So I'm just gonna to go to apps. And over on the right here, I'm gonna to go to programs and features. And then on the left of this window, I'm going to go turn on, sorry, turn Windows features on or off. I'm going to go down to the bottom and then I'm going to enable the Windows subsystem for Linux. And I'm going to press OK. This will go and fetch all the relevant files and then it will install the subsystem. You'll probably need to reboot. And once it's finished, you'll have the bash prompt option available to you in the start menu. So after you've enabled the Windows subsystem for Linux, you're going to need to install a Linux distribution. I recommend just going with Ubuntu. So what you need to do is bring up the Microsoft Store from the Start menu. So just hit the Windows key on your keyboard or hit the Start menu, type in Store, and then launch the Microsoft Store. In the top right, you'll see Search. If you just click in here and type in Ubuntu, you'll see several options come up. Okay, if we go to 18, which is the latest version, a button in the top right hand corner here will say get. It doesn't say that on mine because I already have it, but you just click on get. Once you've got the Ubuntu installation in your account, you just click on install. Now when you do this, this window may pop up if you don't have a Microsoft account. You are not in any way required to do this. You simply close out of this window and the store will then promptly download Ubuntu for you and then it will proceed to install the Ubuntu 18.04 LTS. In this case, you may have a newer version if you're looking at this course a little bit further on. So once you've launched your Ubuntu installation, you'll be presented with this window. It'll say installing, this may take a few minutes, and in this case, you can see that time has passed, but for you, you may actually have to wait a few minutes while it does some additional work, but eventually you'll get this prompt. Please create a default Unix user account. So it doesn't need to match your Windows username. That's simply because it's separate to Windows. It's a subsystem. So I'm gonna just gonna go in here. I'm just gonna go in here and create a Michael C account. And then it will ask you just to define your password. I'm gonna go ahead and just type in that. And then obviously just confirm that password. And then once you're done, you're actually now in your Ubuntu shell. Every time you now run Ubuntu, you'll just get straight to this prompt you'll never have to actually keep doing that over and over. And that's it, we're actually now ready to go and we can start looking at installing and using Ansible on Windows 10.